good day guys, today we are staying in this beautiful resort called Arunan and which is located at Patani Beach Pulau Perhentian at Perhentian Kecil, the small island so this resort was built in 2015 and it's very very special they did not cut any trees and build the resort all around it so it's amazing so before we show you this, we're gonna show you our room. So this room has a double bed and a single bed and an amazing sea view. And this is the toilet. Beautiful guys. Hello. And the shower. We got to be here. Oh, you can see the look at this. Very, very nice. There's also a private balcony upstairs. Let me show you. So we're just gonna have a quick uh, breakfast with Sunny over here, Hello. who is the owner of the Adunan Resort in the Perentian. And later on, we're gonna talk about how you can uh, preserve the, the coral here at the Adunan Resort and how you can adopt your own coral. So today we are going to adopt and name uh, coral. Yeah, so you can name the coral as you want. I don't know how we're gonna call it so far. <laughs> and I Obo. keep Obo. Obo is our cat's name, so we're not gonna call it in the coral <laughs> Obo. So Akim here is going to tell us about all the process to help you uh, adopt a coral and name your own coral. So basically, my name is Hakim, I'm the project connector here. So I've been working in Aluna Coral Project in Aluna Resort for almost uh, three years, I would say. I started in 2020. So let me show you to the corals that we have around here. So all of these corals are live coral that we have collected around the area. So one of uh, our reasoning why we wanted to save the coral is because there's a lot of issue nowadays about the corals. Uh, especially in Pulau Perhentian, there's a lot of tourists, there's a lot of uh, activities going on, not just for tourism, also for fisheries activities. The coral are one of the most uh, heavily impacted marine life. So what we do with the corals uh, that we found around the area, we collected the, uh, them and then we took them uh, from the water and then we bring it here as part of their transit tent. And then if you can see that this is the pot that we're going to use as part of our restoration unit. So a lot of people doesn't know, corals that you're seeing here right now is not an animal, it's not a plant, they are animals. So same <laughs> goes, yeah, same goes to our cats, our self, tigers. Uh, birds, everything uh, belong to the same group as the corals, they are animals but they are not really uh, the kind of animal that want to move a lot they just wanted to stay in one place and then just build up their uh, body so one of the way for us to actually check either the coral is alive or dead so you can see there's a slight uh, colors in the corals looks a bit brownish, some looks a bit yellow so this one you can see is a bit dark brown and another one will be a bit of a thin mustard yellow so this is a bit more yellow this one is yeah, alive this, as well yeah? yeah this is a live one yeah. so the dead coral usually will look like this so what? these are the coral ah. the dead coral so these are the dead one so what we cannot we are, what we can do with this we cannot do anything we can just show to the guests but uh, we can just show to the people how it looks like for the coral uh, skeleton so mm. if you guys see here this is the skeleton that basically the same composition as our bone they are basically from the calcium carbonate, uh, calcium carbonated skeleton. Mm -hmm. But different from us, they don't need milk to build up their bone. They derive calcium. So what they do, they will take the calcium ion that presents in the sea water and then they absorb in their uh, in their body. So as time goes by, they will just develop more and more uh, very complicated structure. So coral, as an animal, have a very simple body structure but because of their skeleton is very complicated, give a very good benefit to a lot of fishes and a lot of marine life in the world. So this is what we're going to do today, a very simple process just to put the coral, tie it on top of this coral pot and then we bring up uh, them in our coral nursery. Right. 
So corals, when I talk about corals, they are basically not one animal. So the one that I'm holding right now is a cluster or colony of corals or colony of coral polyps. So if you can zoom in closely actually, that's right here. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see there's one very tiny circles inside the crevices. Those one tiny circles, or you can see we call it one polyp, is equal to one individual. So basically in this one very tiny fragment contain like maybe uh, maybe thousands of animals. Uh, no no ones or a, a, any researcher have ever counted this one. It will be a waste of time to count them. But <laughs> some species are very big that we can actually see see the individual polyp so this this is that I showed before it's a dead coral but you can see those one tiny hole is actually where one animal sitting in so there that's where all of the animals and their body and their muscles live in so this is where they are kind of like put their body and they just grow up to, to become bigger so again they are very simple they are very small they don't move they don't do a lot but they are doing a lot of things for the marine life and how do they feed themselves they eat plankton all right so yes they do eat plankton mostly 20 percent of the day especially in the night but most of the coral uh, most of the time coral we use uh, things that live inside their body which is we call it zooxanthellae a type of plant that live inside the coral tissue yeah. that give them the ability to absorb nutrients from the sunlight so basically what they do uh, any excess nutrient comes from the algae that live inside their body is the one that gives the most nutrient to the coral for them to grow mm. yeah but when we don't have sunlight uh, especially at night then we, we can see all the tentacles of coral going up and it catch anything of uh, plankton, some can catch small fishes and a lot of other things that they can get in their mouth. And yeah. how long did it take them to grow like this? Like the, the, this the one. one over here? Right. So uh, we have two, you can see here, this, uh, we have two different types of coral. This, these two cluster, these two fragments we call it the branching coral. They grow quite fast, uh, some, uh, especially at this one we call it the cauliflower corals. They can grow, uh, I think within one year, they can grow up to the point like more than 5 to 10 centimeters. Wow. So that's how fast they can grow. But species like this boulder coral grow very slow uh, to the point that uh, in the peninsula Malaysia, in the east coast, uh, they can grow only up to 1 or 2 centimeters a year. Just a very tiny bit. So yeah. that's why when you go for a snorkeling trip and then you see a very big boulder coral, some of them can, I would say the age might be estimated around maybe 200, 400 years old. That's the estimation wow. of coral reef that we have around in Pulau Pahangkian. So they can live forever? Basically, they live forever. So uh, imagine that you know, the coral that we planted might just outlive us very easily. Basically immortal. But unless we do not destroy them, they will just grow on forever. Alright. Yeah, so why, why they die? What so, so there's a lot of reason that the coral is dying right now. One of the reasons is we're talking about the global warming. So the global warming is causing the sea surface temperature to rise. And when I'm talking about the sea surface temperature rising, it's not about 5, centi uh, five degrees Celsius, not 10 degrees Celsius. It's just 1 degree Celsius is enough for the coral to get bleached and become white like this. So especially we have an issue back in 2010 uh, or uh, previous year. Uh, we call it as the El Nino event, which is the there's a heat wave during that year. So if you know about Great Barrier Reef in Australia, almost 80% of the coral there bleached, died, and then only 20% came back to life. But luckily in Malaysia, the corals that we have here are quite resilient to uh, you know warmer water because we are in a tropical country and more throughout the year, our uh, our climate is hot. So basically, we do have bleaching event, but most of the coral they, uh, regain back came back to life. So that's one thing that we wanted to do here in Aruna. We wanted to make sure that the coral can be a bit resilient to uh, warming of sea temperature because right now, if we look at the trend, it's getting warmer and warmer and hotter every year. So these are one of the worst things that actually have uh, affecting the corals. All right, so where do we begin now? So where do we begin? So first of all, when you wanted to handle a coral, you might make sure that you have some glove on. So the glove is actually acting as a protection between you and the corals ah. because, because even though you can see the corals, they look very rough, they are very sturdy, they are very hardcore looking that kind of skeleton but they are very sensitive. I might not know you have anything on your hand like soap, lotion that actually mm. can hurt the coral, can harm the coral. Mm. So while having this glove on is actually just to make sure that there's a cushion between you and yeah. also the corals. Yeah, because yeah. it's alive as well. So yeah, if you get 
maybe it can grow into your skin yeah uh, yes right? it can it can scratch your skin and then first uh when we usually we touch the coral directly with our hands they can get stressed very easily All so right. that's why some of the coral they you, you can smell the very uh, fishy smells uh this those the mucus that the coral are uh, released to make sure that it's to protect themselves All uh, right. but this one is quite okay there are some species in the tank that if you handle it not correctly they will just get slime everywhere like oh mucus everywhere it will smell fishy don't stress buddy don't stress yeah, yeah. <laughs> this one is still okay <laughs> that's okay all right so we are good go. people all right. um right hold the camera a bit all right so you can taste what so you want me to hold uh, you can it. just you can just uh, wear it on one of your hands all right. roman going to try i'm scared i don't want to hurt him i don't want him to hurt me <laughs> They don't bite, yeah? They don't bite. We, we try. They, they can scratch. They can scratch, but they don't bite. They don't bite. They are not sharks. I don't know. Shark don't bite. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do today, uh, right now, is quite simple. So we're just gonna take the corals, put it on top of the pots, and yeah. then use the long end of the uh, cable tie to tie, tie it, it around the coral, and then you just put it inside this uh, cable. Alright. Uh, just film like this. So you can see what you're doing. Yeah, that's right. Very simple. Let me show you one example. So you take one pot, and then I'm going to take one of the corals. So with the hands, with your glove on, is the one that handling the corals. And then tie it on top of the pot. And then you're just going to tie it around the coral. Yeah. And then you can see that the coral is very soft. Yeah. Very soft. Yeah. Very soft. Yeah. Very soft. Yeah. Very Right. Mm. So right now, when we kind of try to move the coral and it doesn't move, this is what we want. So the reason why we don't want the coral to move on top of this pot, if yeah. you can touch with the hands without the glove on, touch the surface of the pot. Uh, some some a bit smooth, some a bit rough. So it's like if the coral keep on moving on top of the pot, it's like we grinding the coral. Yeah, it will damage. Yeah, we damage the coral. It will not grow. So this is what we're gonna do. So it literally looks like a pot of plant. Mm. That's why we call this our coral pot. Yeah, it's the coral pot. So once we finish, we put it here first, just to make sure that they don't dry out. Okay. Yeah. So it's your turn. Which one do I take? I can take this one. Well, this is okay. Yeah? Ah yes. I mean, you can be gentle, but do not be too gentle. Yeah, they can they can handle a bit of pressure. Yeah. So, so we tie that down. Yeah, you can try to pull it. Just a little bit more. Yeah. You can use. No, you, you can just use your hand. Just push this, the head of the cable tie. Yeah. So once you feel like it doesn't move anymore, okay. and then try to okay. wiggle the coral. So if it's not too wiggly, like this, then it's That's okay. okay. Yeah, so you can try to move it. Is yeah. it wiggle too much? No, it's not. No, it's not. So this is very good. So uh, this is how it looks like for the coral. So the one that he planted is not. This is the coral that we call as the Poslo coral or cauliflower corals, because when they grow, they really look like cauliflower. All right. Yeah, <laughs> as the vegetable. Yeah, very it nice. Is. This is one of the best species that we have in the nursery. So within uh, sometimes within five months, you can see they grow to the point you cannot see the cable tie, and you cannot even see the pots. All right. So we now are gonna be going diving and plant our uh, baby over here yes. we named it guess what discover evolution yeah. <laughs> so this is the name of our website and youtube channel so now if you come to arunan you can ask them where is discover evolution and you're going to be able to see our call <laughs> <laughs>
guys, so this was our little video on how to adopt the coral here at the Alunan Resort. We hope that you have enjoyed this little video with us. And if you have not subscribed yet, do not forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. See you on the next video, guys. Bye-bye.